Okay, so the last thing we need to do, and that will allow us to identify uh, Q naught, is to um, uh, use the pressure boundary condition. Remember that we uh, now we we've, we've, we're able to get an expression for the change of pressure uh, with x, uh, but what we haven't said here is yet is that the pressure we know at x equals zero is going to be the same as the pressure at x equals l. So so essentially these the two these two spots here are in contact with atmospheric pressure, and therefore you know the eventually between here and here the pressure just returns to its initial um, value. So this can be uh, simply expressed. So we're going to look at the boundary condition on pressure. And so we know what dpdx is. And so we can simply integrate dpdx uh, along the other axis, so along the stream y's direction in the x direction. So we'll compute the integral from x equals 0 to L of dpdx uh, dp dx dx. And so this is going to be equal to the pressure at L minus uh, the pressure at 0. And so this is here our pressure difference uh, between the pressure uh, at L minus the pressure at 0. And that is this integral. And our boundary condition tells us that this number here is equal to 0 because the two are uh, the same. So we can evaluate this integral. Remember that, that in the dpdx term, there was one term which was due to the Poiseuille flow. Um, so, so this is the term that is due to the Quet flow. And then there was another term which was due to the Poiseuille flow. So when we integrate them between 0 and L, this is our term that was due mostly to the Quet flow. Uh, sorry, this is not due to the Quet flow. Um, but, but here we, we, have those two, we have those two terms here. Um, OK, so. Let's call these two terms one and two, and need we to and we need to express those two terms. Um, and essentially, you see that uh, this. So I've replaced h of x uh, by alpha x plus h naught, knowing that at l equals um, at x equals l, alpha l plus h naught is going to be equal to h one. Eh? So this is uh, our, our final thickness of the gap. Now, this is a lot of algebra, but the only integral you need to do is uh, a, poly, a, 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 fr a rational function of x. So you, you just need to know this integral here, uh, the integral of alpha x plus h to the power n, here n being a negative number. This is minus 2 here. Uh, once you know this integral, you're able to compute those, uh, those two integrals. So I'm going to skip a little bit over the detail. So let's take the first integral. Um, I d I've just wrote the integral here. In the end, you'll find that this integral is equal to 6 mu u divided by alpha, 1 divided by hx minus 1 divided by h naught. So if x is equal to L, this will be a 1 divided by h1. And the second integral here uh, is simply equal to uh, 6 mu q naught divided by alpha, 1 divided by hx squared minus 1 divided by h0 squared. Again, here, when x is equals to L, hx is going to be equal to alpha L times h naught, which is h1, uh, following our notations. Um, so we have those two terms. And so the sum, the sum of these two terms is going to be equal to 0. Right? This is because there is no, again, no change of pressure between 0, no total change of pressure between 0 and L, which doesn't mean that the pressure is the same. Uh, between 0 and L, and the pressure will increase and then decrease again, you'll see. Uh, but we can write that this is equal to 0. And so here are our two terms. Now note that uh, we, can, we can slightly factorize these terms. You have a 6 mu alpha in front of both that we can simplify. Uh, this term here uh, is equal to h naught minus h1 divided by h1 h naught. And this term is equal to h naught squared minus h1 squared divided by h1 squared h naught squared. Right. Um, and actually, this term you can further simplify. Uh, you use uh, that this is equal to h naught minus h1, h naught plus h1, and you see that you can get rid of the factor h naught minus h1 divided by h1 h naught. Right. You can get rid of this factor here, and you're just left here with h naught plus h1 uh, divided by h1 h naught. So when you want to know what q1 is, q is q naught is, you know, q naught is going to be equal to minus u uh, times h1 h naught divided by h1 
plus H naught. That's what you find here. Um, at this point, I want you to notice that as expected, uh, Q in our frame of reference is going to be negative. Huh? So if you're thinking again about our initial picture here, in the frame of reference where we are moving uh, with the top plate, this plate is being dragged to the left. All right, so if you're thinking about the volumetric flow rate, you, expl you explain this plate to sort of drag the flow along uh, in the negative direction. So we get a negative Q naught. Um, and I didn't uh, make this observation before, but I'll do it now. Right, you see that also in the pressure gradient. Uh, if you looked at this uh, expression here, you might think, oh, those two terms have the same kind of contribution to the pressure gradient, but really this Q naught is going to be negative. Right, so so depending on uh, so here when because this is positive, this is negative. This term is going to be positive, and so if the gap uh, increases with x, then this term decreases, and that's going to be the inverse for that. If the gap increases with x, this term will decrease. So those two terms are going to balance out in the pressure distribution, and that's what you see in the final expression. So if now I replace Q0 by what we just found, by this minus U H0 H1 divided by H0 plus H1 in our expression for the pressure gradient. Remember, our pressure gradient is uh, equal to this here, right? Then we'll have our two terms, uh, our two balancing terms, and we finally find a pressure distribution which is equal to So when you substitute uh, for Q0 in our expression of the pressure, uh, you will find this expression here. So Px minus P0 is equal to 6 mu U divided by alpha. Note these two terms here, H1 minus Hx times Hx minus H0 divided by Hx squared uh, times H1 plus H0, right? So you can plot now the pressure distribution and note indeed when uh, X is equal to zero, h is going to be equal to h naught, so this is going to be equal to 0, and therefore px is going to be equal to p at 0. And when a x is equal to l, this h x is going to be equal to h1, and therefore this is again going to be equal to uh, 0, and uh, therefore our pressure here is again going to be equal to p naught. So our pressure distribution is going to be uh, p0 at both 0 and L, and in the meantime, we will have just simple one, uh, one maximum. So if you sketch the pressure distribution, you get something like this. You have P0 at x equals naught. You have P0 at x equals L, and then you have a maximum of pressure, um, not necessarily in the middle here. Huh? So you can, you can plot that. If you replace H of x by uh, alpha x plus um, H0. Note that here it's a little bit difficult to see exactly which term is small and which term is not, but you have alpha, which is a very small number, and then you have h to the cube here, which is a very small number, and here you only have h to the squared. So you note that this is going to be, uh, you have more small numbers on the denominator, so this is you're going to develop a very large pressure. And that is, uh, yeah, that is at the root of, uh, uh, of air bearing.